Welcome back, history buffs. This history reclaimed moment is about the Viking invasions into Iberia. Around 844, the Vikings, well established in Francia, began raiding the Iberian coast. Initially, they found uh, quite a bit of resistance from the local Christian tribes in northern Iberia. With that, they started to move south. There aren't many accounts of the raids because they're so old back to the 9th century. However, there are a couple of chronicles that relate back to the raid on Sevilla. So then the Vikings began to turn their attention further south, and it is known that uh, their initial target was Lisbon, and it said they had between 54 and 80 ships is what's chronicled, but that would be quite a few. Um, they did unsuccessfully raid Lisbon for 13 days, and the governor of Lisbon sent a message to the emir of Al-Andalus, Abd al-Rahman II in Cordoba, reporting the arrival of seaborne warriors. It was also said the emir actually dreamed about the invasion of the Norsemen, and he had a dream that he entered the mosque and saw the Prophet Muhammad lying in the prayer niche wrapped in a shroud. His advisors interpreted this as the coming of pagans. Both of the accounts uh, that exist of the raid on Sevilla says that they took it by storm, and it was brutal. One historian said, quote, They besieged this city and took it by storm. After letting the inhabitants suffer the terror of imprisonment or death, they remained there seven days, during which they let the people empty the cup of bitterness, unquote. Then the chronicler says that the Norsemen uh, were there for seven days. They tried to burn the mosque in different ways, but were unable to get it alight. But they did use Sevilla as a base to raid as far inland as Constania to the northwest of Cordoba. And they never did reach the capital of Cordoba itself. One unlikely scenario says uh, a convert to Islam, Cassius Musa, was recruited by Abd al-Rahman to send his forces of 16,000 men to cut off the Vikings. And they did cut them off in a raid, supposedly, but this is an unlikely story, forcing them to surrender or ransom many of the prisoners they had taken and drove them off and defeated many of them. The more likely scenario is uh, that General Nasser uh, served as a deputy of Andalus, lured the Vikings out of Sevilla, and then beat them decisively, uh, probably outnumbering them because the numbers were probably overstated. Supposedly, there were two battles between two or 20 miles south of Sevilla, depending on which story you go by, and it said that Nasser's forces uh, killed them in a bloodbath with great slaughter, killing one of their chieftains and between 500 and 1,000 men. Some of the Vikings did escape with a certain amount of uh, booty, uh, but the Muslims uh, did burn supposedly 30 ships. Those numbers could be questioned. Uh, and they did hang 400 captives in Sevilla from palm trees on the battlefield and dispatch their heads as trophies to impress one of Abd al-Rahman's rulers in North Africa. And that seems to be really how that raid ended. Here we are at Sevilla. That's a Torre del Oro behind us. Uh, it's a tower put in uh, by the Amavorad's uh, Moors who were here. Uh, they actually put a chain across the Guadalquivir River to stop invaders from bringing their boats up. The Vikings did return to Sevilla in 859, but they found that the Moors had put up an impenetrable wall and uh, it, was, it was very difficult at that point. Uh, so the Vikings, despite their successes all throughout much of Europe, they did not have a lot of success in Spain. 
There were also a lot of the people that were here didn't have a lot of stuff they wanted. They didn't have gold or silver. They, the, the, the mosques weren't filled with uh, golden chalices or silver candelabra or things they wanted. It's a very agrarian people, so there wasn't much that the Vikings really wanted. Thanks again for joining in to this episode of History Reclaimed Moments. And uh, be sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel at Dark Sarcasm's Video Diaries. Thanks for joining.